Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with something very, very special, a 1987 IROC Z Camaro. Now, we know that the IROC, the International Race of Champions package, came out in 1985. The first Camaro with 16-inch wheels, big aluminum rims, gator back Goodyear tires, high-speed Z-rated stuff. But here's the thing. The uh, third-generation Camaro, when it first came out in 1982, was a revelation, a beautiful car. In fact, here it is right here in the cover of January 1982 Car and Driver. Not just more beautiful, better. There it is, of course. It looks kind of like a Ferrari, and compared to the second generation Camaro of 1981, these are about 700 pounds lighter. Uh, you know, a svelter, smaller car. And again, an indirect result of the 1973 OPEC oil embargo. No joke. But anyway, here's the write-up. Now keep in mind, this is an 82, first year. This had the Crossfire uh, fuel injected 305. Now it says here, let's start with the good news. Gas mileage is much improved, superb seats, stickiest tires money can buy, handling is take home Bondurant course, Bob Bondurant, of course, a professional driver, Colbers, etc. Also had a driving school. The drag coefficient is sharp enough to split the airstream the way Moses split the Red Sea. The body is so gorgeous, grown men will blush. The bad news. Well, when the, when the stoplight turns green and accelerators snap open to the floor, the Z28 is Emily Post polite. Everyone else goes first. That's because the Crossfire 305 had 165 horsepower. At the same time, the newly reborn 82 Mustang GT had 157 horsepower. Only a two-barrel car, but in a much lighter car, and the five-liter Mustang would run away from a Crossfire Z28. So Chevrolet knew they had a problem, and they dealt with it right here. Now, the IROC Z could be had with a 305 or a 350. We'll get to that in a second. But the beauty of the IROC Z, of course, was the stylized hood, which kind of took the uh, sunken holes of the Z28 and made them look a little cooler. Simulated, doesn't do a damn thing, but it sells the heck out of cars, but very cool to look at right there. And we look, of course, you see these 16-inch wheels, standard on IROC. And these are also specific front to back. Here's the word front cast into the spoke here. These were only for the front, theoretically. Big disc brakes up on the front of this one here. Now we can't tell which engine this one had because there's no markings down here, but more on that in a second. 87, the IROC logo went from the back of the door to the front of the door. Of course, the body kit here, the uh, rocker extensions. This one does have the CC1 T-tops, which are $866. This one is an automatic, the 700R4, but something we look inside, we're getting to that engine, we look at the tachometer, it has a 5,500 RPM red line. That tells us something. This is a 350 car. If it was a 305, it would have a 5,000 RPM red line. We go to the spin, we see B2K in the top line. Oh, about uh, three quarters of the way over. B2K tells us this thing was born with the 350, the 5.7 with 225 horsepower. So that Emily Post polite stuff, not so much here. 330 foot pounds of torque. And of the 38,889 IROC Zs made in 1987, 12,105 people paid the extra 1,045 bucks for the big 350. To see more, we go to the back and it's still here. Right on. If you're in traffic in your 5-liter Mustang and you see right over here, 5.7 tune port injection, that's the B2K right there, which tells you you're looking at 330 foot-pounds of torque, 225 horsepower. Your Mustang better be packing nitrous and a set of Hoosiers, otherwise this might just zonk you. Now, the only downside to the B2K 350 IROC Z was automatic only. They never did the five-speed stick, which is kind of a bummer. would have been hellish in acceleration. Now, one thing about this, with those 330 foot-pounds, of torque, the rear axle is a different piece than you'll find in even a five-speed 305. This has the Australian Borg Warner rear axle with uh, about a seven and three-quarter inch ring gear versus a 7.6 inch ring gear found on a regular 305 uh, Z28 or IROC. But this one does have disc brakes, standard equipment with the 5.7, the B2K, rear discs right here. And again, the same basic rear axle was also used in the Pontiac Firebird GTA 350 and the Formula 350 with disc brakes. And again, the Australian Borg Warner rear axle with the big uh, seven and three quarter inch ring gear. Now the big question is, is that 5.7 still here under the hood? And I know the answer, it's yes. Let's take a peek, drum roll. And here we go. Behold the Corvette powered Camaro. There it is right there. Now this tune port injection unit was the same thing used on the 305 and 
kind of the downfall. This intake manifold, again, the same plenum size, same runners used on 305 and 350. So in other words, uh, kind of a cork at higher RPMs, but these things were all about torque. Now, the one thing that set the Camaro 350 apart from the Corvette 350, they had the same 330 foot-pounds, but Corvettes in 87 had aluminum heads, whereas these still had iron. And on the IROC Camaro, the exhaust manifolds are these iron logs, whereas Corvette for 87 got a stainless steel tubing, like a header type deal. But again, 225 horsepower, 330 foot pounds of torque. And I gotta say, I love our friend Tony DeFeo, Uncle Tony's Garage, check it out, it's awesome. But here is 1988, this is Cars Illustrated, October 87 actually, and here it is, the 88 IROC Z Torture Test. Now this car is a year older, we have an 87 here, but the same basic idea. And here it is right here, first look. And again, Tony DeFeo, a lunatic. Back then, he used to write about street racing at times when car craft or hot rod wouldn't touch it. But here he is at uh, a GM press release, uh, a press day. And here it is right here. He's beating the heck out of this car. And that's Cliff Gromer at the wheel right there. I know Cliff very well. I rode for him for a few years. And that's Cliff, unmistakable with the glasses and the mustache. Tony's probably shooting the pictures. But on the left, it says, Vet Style 350 TPI Sports a slightly hotter cam and nothing else for a whopping five extra horsepower. They weren't too happy about it. With that said, uh, Tony got in some trouble for laying rubber right there. They were escorted out and they were told, hey, cut that crap out. So they had to take off and do the burnouts elsewhere on the course. But right here, here it is right here. It says GM press preview was held at Mid Ohio Raceway. It says jumping in, turning the key, slamming the shift into go. It says Tony to fail. And stomping the gas pedal, we were immediately met with frantically spinning tires, billowing clouds of white smoke and screams. Hey, you, knock it off off and take it easy or you're out of here, punk. <laughs> this is Tony's typical response or reception. It was the guy in the suit again and he didn't look happy. We didn't really care and made it over to the far end of the track so we could let it all hang out. Classic Tony DeFeo. If you get a chance, do read any of his magazines from like 87 through 91, 92. Uh, just making street racing cool. Tony DeFeo, Uncle Tony's Garage, check it out. It's on YouTube now. But getting back to the origins of the 350 in the IROC, here it is right here. This is Hot Rod Magazine, March 86. And they can sometimes get things right, but not quite. Here's the thing. In here, they talk about how the 350 IROC finally beats the Mustang GT. And we have it right here, 350 IROC. Here's the problem. It says here, <clears throat> Camaro's performance or lack of it being faced with a car that's approximately 300 pounds heavier than a Mustang, the most realistic path to performance was to install a 350 tune port injection Corvette engine. So for 86 and a half, that's just what they did with a thousand IROCs. Also equipped with seven and three quarter inch, that's the Australian Borg Warner. And it says here, the 1,000 of these things would not have air conditioning. Here's the thing, I've looked, I don't think they ever happened. If you know better than me, 86 and a half, uh, 350 IROC, I don't think it happened. This is probably a press car, don't know. But getting back to the rear axle, it's very important. It says here, the rear axle is in step, a step in the right direction. Until now, they were content simply to beef up the seven and a half inch ring gear with a little more material. Both the 350 coming on board with 330 foot-pounds of torque, more durability was clearly in order. That's where Pontiac gets into the picture. And it says here that Pontiac has been pushing the Australian-built seven and three-quarter inch four-pinion rear axle that Chevrolet has been resistant to use for years. It's already standard equipment in WS6 Trans Ams, and Chevrolet finally had to accept it since no other axle meant all the criteria for the 350 Camaro. We look at the performance here. Here's the IROC in the left. 230 horse was actually 225, but the performance was 0 to 60 and 6.4, 14.3 at the bottom, and that's not too shabby, but again, uh, if this was a uh, 305 car, it could probably add a second to that, 15.3. On the right, there's the basic stock Mustang 5 liter, 200 horse, 280 foot-pounds of torque, but 300 pounds lighter. And that went 6 0 14 6. So, in other words, the Mustang for a whole lot less money was actually quicker, but that's what you get for three and being 300 pounds lighter. But here we have the 350 IROC provides enough justification for Ford management to, to escalate the GT performance race. And believe it or not, Jack Roush prototyped a few 351 Fox Mustangs. They ran them down the assembly line at Dearborn just to see if it could be done. Never came to that, but that would have been cool if the 57 IROC led to a 58 Mustang GT. That would have been like the 60s all over again. But stuff we see that's kind of interesting here, a very original engine bay, but underneath that IROC or Z28 hood, the under frame has these two structures here that hint that maybe this hood could have been functional. These pass through, and you gotta wonder if maybe there's some thought given to a cold air system, but the irony here is look at this underside here. See those sort of delta shapes? Well, this is another Camaro hood right here. 
This one is a stock, nothing flat hood, nothing to it, right? Just a nothing. But look underneath, Chevrolet commonized. They use the same underside for stock flat hoods and for the IROX. Interesting stuff. And we know this is a nothing because it has a 2.8 liter sticker right there for the emissions. It's a nothing. So this was once above a 2.8, 173 cubic inch Yon motor. And if you think that's bad, you could get the 151 cubic inch inline four in a Camaro Sport Coupe if you really want wanted it, that would have been the polar opposite of this B2L IROC Z with its 5.7 liter Fox Mustang, I won't say killer, but certainly it was right there. So this is the Corvette Hearted Camaro. Now if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and ring the bell so you know when the next video hits, which is tomorrow morning.